you guys, you ladies, you mentioned creating peace and different practical ways that you could help create an environment with um, for peace for your husbands when they come home. Now, there is a reality that, you know, especially depending upon where you live or just just this this nation in general, it's not uncommon for black men to go out and experience racism. And I think in ways that are a lot more blatant, I can say me being married to a black husband versus me being going out by myself, I can, I can see that there's different treatment and sometimes it's subtle and sometimes it's blatant the way I'm treated at a store versus the way he's treated at a store. A few times we've gotten stopped um, by the police and they're like, okay, just let me go versus the way that he's been treated. It's like, so in my experience, even I can see subtle ways that I am perceived or treated differently than my husband who was tall, you know, tall and dark skin. Um, and I, even my mom alluded to this where my mom lived a certain way and her idea of racism was just kind of like way out there. And then she married my dad, who was also, you know, a darker skin, you know, big guy. And um, then she started noticing treatment that she didn't, she didn't understand. And so I think even as, you know, as black people going out in the society, we can experience different things. And sometimes it can be a little bit hard to truly understand the ways men are made to have to try to navigate an environment that is not only is it um, just toxic for men in general, but it is it's specifically toxic and it specifically, I think, targets black men because they're seen as such a, you know, so much of a threat. So with that, um, I'll start with, I'll start with you, Lady Di. Have you ever felt disconnected from your husband's experience and how are you able to offer support? Um, yes. So I haven't experienced the um, stories that you mentioned per se, but uh, military, he's in the military. So I've experienced or he's experienced things that I can't relate to because I've never been involved or around. I could just hear stories or see how he's acting or, you know, in that difference. So for me to support him, I just don't talk about it with him. I let him come to me with it. And then when he comes to me with it, I just listen first because mm -hmm. I, I can be quick to speak because I'm like, oh, well, you know, and I'm trying to give out solutions and stuff. But when you're talking about those type of situations, you want to make sure that they're venting because it's a way for them to not get depressed because they're out in the world dealing with these traumas that we as women can't help them with. So you want you want your man to vent. And then if he sometimes they would ask you or, you know, what do you suggest or you just let, you know, if you have the a right answer or an appropriate answer, respond. If you don't, you could just, like I said, be there um, and, you know, try not to pick fights all the time. Understand that these men actually go out dealing with this on a daily basis. So you don't want to always be confrontational with your man and he's going to feel like you're just like the things that he's dealing with. And you don't want that type of war in your house. So that's the main thing I can say. Okay. No, that makes so much sense. Bella, what do you have on the topic? How are you able to support, um, or no, sorry. Have you ever felt disconnected from your husband's experience and how are you able to offer support? In a way, um, because he's a man, I felt disconnected, but I understand uh, my husband is in the military and I was as well. And so in that way, I can identify to an extent. But again, he does deal with certain things because, of course, you know, if you're, you're not, we're, you know, we're on the same unit. Um, but in terms of supporting him, yes, literally just listening and just, you know, just saying like, you know, wow, that's crazy. I can't believe that, you know, and just asking him probing questions, um, you know, if I deem it necessary just to help him in his problem solving if that's what he's trying to do or needs to do um but as lady Di said i also just listen uh, because yeah he he does need to vent sometimes and so with that um you know th that that's typically what i do also if there's maybe something maybe like a different path he maybe needs to go down i also try to inspire um him in different ways you know showing you know it just again asking probing questions just again get his mind going and to also help his, his you know temperament kind of come down if he came home hot or if he got hot telling me about the situation mm, no that makes sense i mean again just listening just listening how many times 
how many at least maybe i've heard this because i know different content creators in the manosphere space but a constant complaint out here is just these women aren't listening even when we had the conversation you know bella about the wigs and you were like there's a lot of women out here who just they don't care they don't listen to what these men are saying because they've been saying for years that they don't want all that fake stuff and yet we continue to see more and more of it <laughs> so something so simple and i always say it's like men are pretty simple like they're not asking for a ton it's just either we like to complicate it or we just refuse to listen to what they want and I have a funny story, I have a funny story about the hair thing so yeah. back, back then me and my husband been together nine years um there was a time where i went natural and he was like, oh, just wear it like that. But no, I had to go get it colored, you know, all that stuff, because I wasn't ready to wear it natural. And I was like, color is going to get me by. And my hair fell out for the <laughs> last, the two years prior, like after that, I'm sorry. My hair doesn't take good to color. I had to realize that three different times. So he was already suggesting, no, just wear it like that. Let it strengthen, like he knows something, right? And I was like, <laughs> it's going to strengthen. <laughs> But yeah, I should have listened to him then. That's just a funny story. I wasn't listening to little simple stuff, but sometimes when it comes back around, you're like, oh, well, you were right. So if we listen more and find that your man is very intelligent. These men have a lot of knowledge that, you know, women don't really understand. So you will understand when things start happening. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that's just, you're right. Cause it's like, it's not only us listening to necessarily what they're saying when they're expressing their emotions or just what's in their mind but it's also sometimes listening to their advice which can be quite humbling and sometimes you don't want to hear it but right they can just be right you know and they're really trying to offer especially as the head and i think you know um sbu alluded to this where it's like you know s spiritually understanding the place that a husband is and respecting that role. And it's not even necessarily that like the husband's gonna be perfect all the time because they're not. But it's like, if you understand that God created a certain order and you've surrendered your life to God, right? And you were trying to you were trying to live according to those principles, then just, just you honoring who God has created him to be in your life, just you doing that, even if he kind of gets it wrong, even if he bumps his head, that in, in and of itself commands a blessing. That in and of itself is going to eventually lead to prosperity because you're now doing things according to the natural order of things. So definitely. Now, um, SB, so what are your thoughts on this? Or did I already ask you this question already? No, you didn't. But um, <laughs> I was like, me and Mr. Boss actually had this discussion not long ago. Okay. Um, and he was telling me how he felt because my husband is the big guy, the football player, the fair skin, not dark is not dark like myself. And you know, I, I live in the suburbs. I myself have not been able to relate to it, but I listen to him. I have my own set of problems. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> because yeah, yeah. I, I, you get what I'm saying. So it's not that I'm taken away, but like, like for instance, we may be out somewhere and he'll say, did you see that? And I'd be like, <laughs> see what? <laughs> no, <laughs> you know, so I won't see it. But far as me and far as I go, it has been more blatant, you know, in your, I mean, they don't, they don't stop. They may, you know, grab a person near him, but for me, they may just take mine, who knows, yell out the window or whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. So I just listen. I listened to him and I said, well, you don't, you know, don't allow those people to keep you from doing doing who you are, you know, because it can do that. It can change yeah. them. It can it can where it can make them depressed about, you know, whatever this person is thinking. You know, if you if you become what they what you think they're thinking, because they're not going to outwardly say it. It's just that they look at you or they, you know, like, for instance, he, he gives this. He says, as long as they think I pay professional football, they're OK. But if they think, right, so if he's driving his sports car and he's going to get food or something and he gets out of his car and they like, oh, you know, then it's okay. But just say he had on his um, his dungarees from changing the tire or something like that, coming in a little too natural. It'd be, you know, what he doing here? You know, like that. So, you know, me, I would always say, how you doing, ma'am? You know, <laughs> I don't I don't let people do things like that. I always bring awareness to them, you know, or I uh, I make them conscious of what they're doing, because sometimes I think people move very unconsciously just because of the conditioning that they have or have been going through. So 
you know, I just listen and I say, babe, you just can't, you can't let that, you know who you are. You've worked and gotten everything yourself, what you have. So don't allow somebody to make you feel differently about yourself. Man, no, that's, <laughs> you know, you alluded to the fact, yeah, especially when you start, because the reality is, you know, I've mentioned this in, in previous videos that the, the best way actually to acquire wealth, right, and to, to move up, whatever, is is through marriage. Especially right. when you get married young and you stay together and you guys build, support each other. Like, that's the best way. And you might start to find yourself in nicer environments or nicer neighborhoods that may not be as diverse of where you came from. Or you might now you're going to be around different people who aren't used to seeing darker skinned people. Like, that's a whole nother dynamic. And so being able to navigate and understand what your what your husband may be going through. He may be getting stopped by the cops a lot more cons consistently. If he's in a particular car, if he's dressed a certain way, he may try to go go walking, right? And then somebody's like, sir, are you law? You know, all those little different things that you may not get as a black woman, or you might, you know, it just, there, there's so much different nuance. Yeah, it's, it's weird, but the police thing is funny. The, the His sports car that he has is kind of like a universal one, so everybody loves it. So okay. when they see him driving it, everybody loves that particular black, white, everybody loves that particular car. So it's like, oh, we all family. We don't care what color you, what color you are. But you're exactly right. He may be in the grocery store, I said, and his appearance may not be uh, a certain way, and he gets strange looks. He tells me all the time, should have seen how them women was looking at me. I was like, well, what's going on? He's like, I don't know, you know, so. Grabbing the purse, you know, grab, I hear my husband say all the time, grab purse, you'll hear the doors lock. You know what I mean? <laughs> or people follow him in the store like, you need help, sir? Like just really, really supposedly being really nice, but they're just following him. Like sometimes it can be subtle and then other times it can be pretty blatant. So yeah. um, after a while yeah. that can, that can really start to weigh on a person. So that's why. Yeah important to understand that's not to say they can't still be successful but it's just understanding that and acknowledging it not just say because i think i think what i hear sometimes is it's almost like in some of the larger conversations i hear just regarding the black community in general like it can almost be the sense of trying to minimize what's going on um and i can hear that in both space on both sides sometimes but when it comes to men them trying to share their experiences it's just like we went through this we feel this we go through this and there can be this like, oh, you just need to shut up and build or you just needed this or you just need to do better. Or it's not, you know, just all, all these all these little subtle ways and sometimes blatant ways that I think just the experience of men, their complaints can be minimized. It's just like you just need to shut up, protect and provide. Mm. And <laughs> um, and with that energy, it's it's not going to be healthy. It's just not going to be healthy at all. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. No, but you do you do want to um, inspire and encourage your husband because you I don't want him taking on things that that are not him. You know, yeah. you want to make sure he's seen himself as the king that he is, mm -hmm. you know, or the man in authority as he is. Like you never want a person to uh, think that these people are they better than me? You know what I mean? Like sometimes you can fall into that because if they if they're looking at you like they're, you know, like you said, locking your door, grabbing your purse you know what am what am i thinking you know what are they thinking what are they, what are they putting on me right now what are they thinking i'm gonna grab them out the car i'm gonna grab their purse why would they think of that think of me that way is it my skin color really you know so yeah. i just always continue to encourage him build him up all the time tell him he can do anything you can do anything i had i told my husband that years and years ago he i think he actually thought he could build a house i was like babe we don't do that but okay <laughs> <laughs> but look, you know, he was going in the right direction. Listen, it's like nobody ever said it. I said, baby, he's just like, I, I got it. With the right tools, we can do this. And it's, it's so funny. I'm like, okay, we, we, we're older now. We can't continue to do these things. <laughs> it was so that funny. That is so hilarious. 